So hello everybody and welcome to a Christmas video. Um, here's the thing, I don't know, some of you know about this, but I'm sure not most of you don't, is that in 2016, I think it was before I went on holidays, I actually sent a Christmas Santa Claus letter to the Power BI team. You'll see it here. And I listed my wishes for Power BI improvements, basically, but I just, you know, just to be able to get through and do it, I just did it with the Santa Claus theme. And uh, I, I'm going to review uh, the letter, what I wanted and what has been done, but also create a new one. So what are my top wishes for Power BI 2019? And also what are the things I love most of the things that have been released in 2018, okay? So it's a complete wish video. So here's where I sent them, oh, poor, oh my god, <laughs> poor things. But okay, it reads like this, it says, Dear Santa, my name is Ruth Losoro Martinez and I am not relevant years old. Uh, this year I have been really good, so I hope you have the time to bring me some presents. He says, I read online that if I want my wishes to come true, I should draw a picture of you. I really want to get my wishes, but I don't have a lot of time to draw you. So I show you here a picture of Santa Claus drawn by somebody else, hoping this is a good compromise. I hope you like it. And then I... Just copy paste it from Google Images <laughs> and the image of Santa Claus. And then it says, here's the list of wishes for 2017. So Power BI was quite new by then. And here it goes. These are the things that I wanted. It said visual graphical improvements. This is settings for the visuals. And this is, you know, text fonts and transparency and, you know, change the values of the, all those things were not possible in the beginning so this has been definitely done filter behavior this was one of my biggest complaints is this you know when you said filters on the filter pane they are so secret for the people that are not power bi users they don't know that there is a filter pane and that things are being filtered so i think the new filter pane basically addresses this wish uh, they're supposed to filters in a way that you can see that something has been filtered. I wanted a date picker that I got too. Themes, I got that too. Text boxes, it was the possibility to just, you know, add a font and it, um, the text size and color. And it was not possible in 2016, so that is in there. We've got that. Power BI desktop layout. This has not been done, been done at all. Um, I think that, you know, working in Power BI, it takes quite many clicks to get things on. You have to click, 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 and then you have what you need. And I, I find this a little bit annoying. I'm getting more and more used to it now, so I'm not that sensitive about it. But I still think that the layout could be improved. If you worked with Google Data, Data Studio, I think it's called, the user interface, I think, is uh, better, much better. It's less clicks and it's more intuitive, but that hasn't been done. Um, icons, support for font awesome icons is not either been done. That is something that I still wish. Uh, copy paste from different files. This is done. Wonderful. Sheet and tabs functionality. You know, when you have a lot of uh, tabs, before, when you click on one, you, it got all the way to the end. And, you know, how you actually work with those small tabs, it, it was quite annoying. So they have actually fixed that to create a new sheet. Uh, when you create a new sheet, it always shows at the end. That behavior is still there, which is really annoying. You know, when you're creating a new sheet, more often than not, I just want to have it exactly next to the one that I'm at because I'm copying that, or it's, it's not there yet. Measuring, measuring columns, when creating a column and you measure, it shows in the first table. It is still like that. So when you're creating measures and columns, you know, everything goes to the first table instead of the table that you're at. They haven't done this either. Quick access toolbar. 
needs to expand as, as your ad icons. I don't remember now if you, this, this is still an issue because, you know, I get the blue screens on my computer all the time, like once a day, more or less. And then everything in Power BI resets, all the, the settings reset. So I don't use a quick bar anymore because there's no point. So I don't know if, yeah, no idea. Now, the icons for the measures, the tables, you'll see there, the new table, new measure, they all look the same to me. It's like, which one would you pick? I think they are still look the same, right? Drill down functionality is super confusing. I still think it is confusing though. I, I, I think it's easier to, you know, right, right click, but now with the plus and minus buttons, it's easier to see. So I guess this is the lever too. Custom visuals, they should be handled the same way as WordPress handles their plugins. I don't know if you're a WordPress user, but they have a really good way to incorporate things that other developers do. And I think they've done a great job with that. They haven't got as far as WordPress, but they are quite on the way to do that. So that is wonderful. So I would say that I just got two years later, most of it. So thank you, Power BI team. Now, when it comes to this year's wishes or next year's wishes, I would say, I have a list of 12, one, one for each month. So here they go. When it comes to, you know, getting data in custom connectors, my wish would be to hide the, the code for the custom connectors. Here's the thing. People are asking all the time about custom connectors. So I need to connect to this source. Could you help me create a custom connector? And sometimes I feel like, oh my God, there should be already a custom connector to that. Why is not? And the reason why it's not is because if somebody does a custom connector and it put it for sale, the code is available for everybody. So anybody can just buy it and resell it somewhere else. And that prevents developers to have a, a motivation and incentive for actually creating custom connectors that they can actually sell. So until the code is protected, nobody's going to do that. I mean, there are a lot of uh, open source custom connectors. I have some, but that's as far as people will go unless that happens. So my wish for 2009 would be that there's a way to protect the code for custom connectors. So more developers will have a motivation to do them and to sell them. I'm sure there is a market, huge market for it. I get asked to do custom connectors all the time. And the second one on this category would be the social media connectors. You know, Google, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, you know, the, the big, the big ones. There is a connector for Google. There is a connector for Facebook. There's no connector for Instagram but they are not good enough. If I may say that, you, when you want to do advanced things, they don't allow it. So for the top five social media, they should definitely be a connector there that is fully working, my opinion. Okay, moving to Power Query. When we go to Power Query, I would say, you know, when you are grouping things in folders, when you have, uh, always want to have data sources and then I have support sources and then I have functions and parameters, I put them in folders. And there is a great way for the customer just to be able to see what everything is and what it does. And I can add new folders, but I cannot change, you know, when you are a folder, it has one folder, you can change the name, whatever you want, but the other one is called other. And you can't change the name of that. Beyond me, why? But it annoys me because that I would like to say what it is on that folder and I can't because it's just called other. I'm just sometimes tempted to leave it empty. But yeah, yeah. it's a small change, but it would be very useful. Next one, incremental refresh for everybody in Power BI desktop. I know this is going to be a no, but that's my wish. I think it's a waste of resources to actually download all data all the time. Seriously, I, I would love to see incremental refresh everywhere. Don't hold my breath on that though. Regular expressions for Power Query. 
that would be fantastic. It will make the tool a lot more versatile. So hopefully soon. Uh, I would say stop a query. You know, sometimes you, you do a refresh and then you regret it because it takes a long time and you want to stop it and it just, no, you can't. It just, you have to finish, wait until that thing does whatever it is doing to finish. And sometimes you just have to kill Power BI altogether, which is a bit annoying. So it would be great to be able to stop a refresh, a query that's been, that the refresh has started. I would say, you know, in some of the transformations in Power Query, for example, split column, you start to split the column and then it adds a step that is change type. So you split a column, change type, you split a column, change type. And I don't want that. <laughs> I want to decide <coughs> which steps I want. I don't want Power BI to guess anything and say, oh, you probably want to change the type. And there is actually a bad practice because it's change type everywhere. Why would you want to do that? It makes no sense. So. All those extra steps, away. <laughs> they shouldn't be there. And then, of course, it's versioning for M code and for Power BI, right? To be able to see and track all the different versions of it. When it comes to uh, modeling, let's start there. I love the new modeling pane. I think that I see where it's going and it's really, really good. There is one thing that I mentioned on the video where I review that, that is the, you know, to be able to change where a measure belongs on this, you know, what is a home table. You have to go to the visual pane to do that and also to change the date type. So whatever you are doing on the model on the visual pane, I would like to have that on the model pane too available. I don't know why it's not. When it comes to DAX, it's, it's got to be copy and paste measures. Sure you want to copy and paste measures, right? I just find it so annoying that you can't. I mean, it's such a basic feature. Again, it's probably super complex. I don't know, but I would love to have it. When it comes to visualizations, I've said that before, I would love to have the visuals filter each other instead of highlighting each other. So annoying, so annoying, it's horrible. Please, filter instead of highlight. And then every time you create a new visual, you put whatever you, you have, you know, like geography and sessions, for example. And Power BI tries to decide, okay, because you have a country, you probably want a map. No, I don't want a map. I want a table on all the visualizations because you want to see the data first. I mean, it's very rare that you know what data type you have and you want it. And, and oftentimes it's maybe not that bubble map that I want, I want the shape map. So don't try to guess for me what I want, just give me a table so I can see the data and see that it's correct, that the numbers look good, and then I can pick whatever visual I want. Because the first thing I have to do every time I create a visual is to change it to a table. Change it, please. Okay, labeling. I think the labeling for visuals are, they, they've been doing improvements, but still not good enough. You, more often than not, if the data is scrumped, which happens all the time, the visuals, the labels won't show. And, uh, it's not that good. I mean, it's not so, so professional just to have visuals that don't show the data. It's just a graph, then you can might as well to the table. So that I would love to have, you know, better labeling on all visuals, basically. So that is my top 12 requests for Power BI 2019. So I'm mean, curious, let me know what yours are. And most of this stuff is already on ideaspowerbi.com. Go there and vote. Just take like an hour at the end of the year, review whatever is in there and vote so you can actually have an impact of what the Power BI team actually develops. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, the features that I love that the team has made in 2018. And here they go. The new modeling tab, I think it is fantastic. Great job. They are still developing, but I see where they are going and I love it. The filter pane, that was on my Santa um, paper. Great job, fantastic. 
no headers on Power BI.com. You know, you can disable the headers when you publish things in Power BI.com so they make the thing look finished. I love that feature, it's great. Intellisense on M, they are still developing. DAX editor improvements, great, great, great. Filtering on the data pane. What? Filtering on data pane. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Moving on. Drill through bookmark tool tips. I love, 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 love drill through. I think it's a fantastic feature. The thing that I have, um, my concerns with drill through is that you don't know that there is a drill through. You have to just go there and right click. It's the same like drill down before. And that is a, that, that would be my only complaint with drill through. Bookmarks and tool tips. They are, tooltips is a great gimmick and bookmarks is a great way to create navigation on a Power BI report. Then selected value for DAX. I love that little DAX thing. It's just so useful. That, that is my favorite addition to the DAX formula language by far. Um, monthly updates. Oh, no, it says here, uh, Microsoft Store Power BI version. So I don't have to go and update that manually. They will, which is really, really, really good. Thank you for that. Fantastic. So last but not least, it's got to be the monthly updates. I think it is amazing the innovation pace that the Power BI team has. It's just um, really impressive, actually, that they can pull out so many features and so many great features. Some of the features that they are pulling out, they, nobody has asked for them. So they have both a great innovation team and execution team. So it feels like Christmas every month. So thank you a lot for that. Uh, regardless of the small complaints, it is absolutely fantastic, the job that you guys do. So um, uh, yeah. I hope that everybody now has a great Christmas, that you get whatever Santa got you, and then I get what I wanted for 2018. <laughs> what are your best wishes for Power BI 2018? Let us know in the comment box, and if, why not tell me what your best or favorite feature is of the things that the Power BI team released in 2018. So with that said, have a really fantastic Christmas. If you're not celebrating Christmas, have a fantastic, if you have, probably don't even have holidays, but have a great day. And I'll see you again on the next video. Take care. Bye.